by Lowe's. This is the Advocare Invitational. And we welcome you to the Walt Disney World Resort from HP Fieldhouse. Number 23, West Virginia, taking on Maris in our fourth quarterfinal. Winners today already include Missouri as they blast in Long Beach State. St. John's getting past Oregon State. So that sets one semifinal. And UCF able to hang on to beat Nebraska. They await the winner of this one. Hi, folks. John Chambi, Fran Fraschilla, and a happy Thanksgiving wherever you are. Thanks for joining us here tonight. We get a check on the number 23 team in the land, Bob Huggins, who is coaching at his alma mater. This is his 11th season. They've gone to the Sweet 16 two of the last three years. This is his final stop uh, before heading to the Naismith Hall of Fame, eventually the eighth winningest coach in the history of college basketball. What a resume. And West Virginia led by Javon Carter, who's a guy that does a little bit of everything for them. Absolutely. Start, came here four years ago, not regarded very highly by most didn't start as a freshman backed up Jawan Staten but since then it's been all Jawan Carter on both ends of the floor the outstanding defensive player in the Big 12 a year ago can make big shots when he needs to be and he's one of the best seniors in the country check out the lineup for the Mountaineers they're starting five Carter and Miles so experienced in that backcourt then West Harris and as well Kanate, Parker, Knutson, Dosich, Funk, and Schoberg, the starters for Marist. And Marist wins the tip, and the Red Foxes control. They will try to spread the floor, John, in a hybrid, and that's what you don't want to do. Immediately, Carter to steal, couldn't finish. Rebound, and a foul underneath as Harris Absorbs the contact. Javon Carter, they'll pick in the pocket immediately to Brian Parker. Yeah, Brian Parker, not a pure point guard. Watch him turn, and once you turn your back like that on a thief like Carter, you are in trouble. He just smelled it out and reached in from behind. Harris missing the first, the junior college transfer, but transferred from junior college, but actually didn't play Juco ball last year. And actually, it was fortuitous. He was at Lawson State, and his coach, Delvon Matson could have had him back playing in January, and he decided not to waste that year so that he would have three years at West Virginia. And there's that pressure again. Press Virginia right out of the gate, John. Dosich buries a three. He leads them in rebounds and assists, and the transfer from Marshall knocks down the triple. And that's what they need. They need a little more scoring out of Alexander Dosich. But his versatility is perfect for this offense. Harder handling here. Jumper from West. That's no good. And a rebound from Dosich. If you're, if you're Parker, don't spin. Don't spin, Brian. Parker has been so good over his time at Marist. He is a junior now from the Cleveland area. And uh, Mike Makers first recruited Marist. And he obviously comes from one of the great programs in the state of Ohio, Bill Angeles St. Joe's. We'll get into that. That jumper no good. And the rebound is pulled down by Dexter Miles Jr. West Virginia without Issa Ahmad suspended until the second semester. Issa Ahmad, who's been one of their better players the last couple of years and last season averaged a little over 11 points a game. Could be inconsistent at times to be sure, but he did not meet NCAA eligibility requirements and so he is not eligible to play until January. And this West Virginia team, despite the two senior guards, is a young basketball team. Seven sophomores, John, including three in the starting lineup. They certainly could use a mod. And in fact, they're not, their pressure defense hasn't been as good as Bob Huggins told us yesterday. They're just not as deep a team as they've been in the past few years the fourth year they've committed to the full court pressure. 
he said that they may not do it quite as much overall this season. Carter handling. Benate was calling for it. Yep, they're in a little triangle inside now that they like to use. Canate jump hook, and that rattles home as he was able to get it to go over Schober. And we watched him last year. Reminds me of a baby Al Horford. Doesn't have the perimeter game yet, although that's coming. But uh, the size, the shot blocking ability. There's Parker. That's what he does. Explosive for yep. Brian Parker. He's more of a two guard that has to handle the ball because he is such a good scorer. But he came on the scene as a freshman, John, and was outstanding average 16 a game as a freshman his dad played at cleveland state we mentioned bill angela st joe's and great history there going back to clark kellogg and desmond howard the golick brothers actually played football there Canate not able to hit and showberg with the board Goldberg down the middle, and it rolls out. I mean, he had a wide open look at it. The sophomore from Sweden. Well, the defender went for the steal, and he had the lane, and man, you just got to make that. That's a little bit of skill and a little bit of bad luck as well. So Schoberg picks up. Two quick fouls, and Tobias will grab a seat. It's a Maris team that does have a, an international flavor to it. Got guys from Montenegro, Sweden, Iceland, Italy, Finland. What do the, the coaches tell us? Trying to yeah. take, a, take a page out of the St. Mary's, Gonzaga, Davidson. Davidson playbook, absolutely. Yeah, yeah those teams consistently delivering on international challenge. Of course, the best player to ever come out of come out of Marist College was the Duncan Dutchman, mm -hmm. Rich Smith. Carter points and hits. Javon Carter able to knock it down, led in points per game, assists per game, steals per game, minutes last year, and he was their second leading rebounder at 6-2. And there's that pressure, a five-second call to get the turnover. Good job by Harris on the ball. Let's take a look at Harris. He's got to create the, the, the vision impairment by the passer in. The Williams, freshman out of Baltimore, is saying, hey, help me. Remember how good Nathan Adrian was at the point of that press. What a wonderful career he had. Mm. Morgantown kid. It was so travel for them. Yeah, just it was, and they missed it. Three steps. Pivoted twice. Chase Harler into the game, as well as Machi Bender. This is Bender. Had it taken away. And Austin Williams, the freshman from New Jersey. Yeah, the give off as he's able to find Kristen Paulson. Well, at least for the first four minutes, a confidence builder for the Red Foxes. Pretty amazing here at the Advocare. We've got two players from Iceland. As Carter tracks down the miss. Kick out. Harler launches. That's a little strong. And here's Williams. Carter takes it away. Flips it up ahead. Harris. And a two-handed stop. Tied at eight. Let's see if Harris can continue to be an impediment to the inbounders, and he is. Inside, and they get Bender on the foul. Javon Carter, the kick up ahead. Wesley Harris with the throwdown. And we're tied here in the early going. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by AdvoCare. To learn more about the comprehensive offering of nutritional products, go to AdvoCare.com. Gildan, love your dad, but don't wear his underwear. Gildan, every thread counts. And Dollar General, 
Save time, save money every day. Back inside HP Fieldhouse, tied at 8, 15.09 to go here in the first half. John Chambi and Fran Priscilla, and we're so used to seeing West Virginia administer that pressure, and they force the turnovers, the deflections, the steals, and there's how it it lays out, at least so far. Yep, and, and these numbers really aren't as, as prolific as the turnovers numbers have been in the past, although they are turning teams over on about 29% of their possessions. Almost one out of every three times. National average, John, is around 19%. Okay. Gives people the, the kind of the reference point. Yeah, context for it. Yeah, a lot of times we throw out numbers and we don't put them in context. Yeah, what's it. good? Mm-hmm. Average is 19%. So they're uh, 10 points higher. That's pretty good. 10 percentage points. Little zone now. Little, looks like a 1 1 3 zone. Will morph into a 2 3. From the corner, West can't hit. And the rebound pulled down by Paulson. Yeah, see, West can shoot it. His numbers are down this year, but that's a contested shot. Parker, that'll go. Or I beg your pardon, Austin Williams. He's another guy that went to a high school with great tradition, right? Yeah, went to Seton Hall Prep. Place that turned out Brandon Knight, Brevin Knight, his older brother. Donate, nice. nice move, spinning towards the base. How about the improvement? I mean, and he's jacked. He looks like the Purdue Boilermaker. <laughs> he, he is jacked. Had a really good freshman year. Offense is improving. So far, good ball movement by Marist against that pressure. Williams fires. Kanate uh, with the rebound. Here comes Carter. And then let's see what they have. They have offensive. Yeah, they do. And they get that one on Teddy Allen, the freshman from Nebraska. Easy call. Teddy Allen, who a, was a tremendous scorer. His two years at Boys Town High School in Nebraska. He was actually the, the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state mm -hmm. and averaged over 30 points a game. I know talking to Hugs last year, all season, they were really excited about him, and they should be. You know, it's funny. You could sit there and, and talk whatever you want, but in a, you know, standard type of style, you're averaging 30 points a game in high school. You're in, good. In 32 minutes. Right. Yep. <laughs> and doing it at that, at that level is Harler inbounds. West Virginia down two here in the early going. So they've hung in there against that pressure. Now here's a little out of sorts offensively. I've been able to hit shots. Kanate nice. inside. That was an excellent design play. They overloaded one side of the zone. Watch how they, when they swing this ball to the corner, John, watch the defender rush out at Lamont West. See, they have they got three guys on that side, so the defender gets beat, the center has to come over, and a nice dump off by Lamont West. Sagaba Kanate. The last year played in the neighborhood of like 11 minutes a game and he's coming off a career high 20 points and he's got seven already in this one and as I mentioned earlier he and West are only sophomores Harler on the floor right now sophomore yep. Allen the freshman that one knocked away from Parker and here's Carter the give nice. off West yep. plus tax. What a great look by Javon Carter. Great vision. Took a peek. He just looked, he peeked, watch him peek now. He knows, he doesn't even have to look anymore. Once he knows Lamont West is running that right wing, he, he doesn't give away the pass, John, by staring at his teammate. He looks the other way in a nice dump off. McClenaghan checks back in as Dozich will sit. He has two fouls. And West Virginia by four. John Chomby, Fran Fraschilla, happy Thanksgiving to you.
from HP Fieldhouse. And the Mountaineers on an 8-0 run. So they have a foul away from the ball. And there is Mike Baker, fourth year, came from Division Three Williams, reached the Final Four three times, national championship game a couple of times, and they put together some incredible teams. There. You, you saw them, right? You mm -hmm. watched them play. They play like a, a Division One program. Yeah, no doubt. Williams and Amherst. Those two schools, really impressive. Three straight turnovers for Maris now. As Carter, ball fake, kick out Harlan. Long rebound, and it'll be Maris basketball. But we mentioned Mike Maker telling us that he wants this, his teams to have an international flavor to him. But the other thing that he told me, he was a former assistant at West Virginia under John Beeline. That's who he aspires to play like he wants his teams to have you know the John Beeline Michigan yeah. West Virginia flavor to him ball movement spacing yep. screening In the first three games they've struggled somewhat and their their skill level for the offense to me still needs to improve But so far this is a great start Carter all wow. over Knutson Oh wow Bolden off the mark, loose ball, McLennigan with the rebound, and then he gets fouled. How about Carter's harassment? Look at this. This is uh, this is uh, ball pressure right here. You watch it at home. Watch him move his feet, active hands. Then watch when he picks up the dribble. Active hands without fouling, John, which is a key. Makes no sense to reach in. Commit a silly foul and negate all that hustle. Nice, nice cut, nice pass, and that'll count. Gold chatting. Well, there's a perfect example of uh, of the kind of offensive movement that Mike Maker's trying to get his team to execute. Great backdoor cut. Did you notice the backdoor pass comes off one hand? That's because it's quicker to throw it with the flick of the wrist one hand and to catch it with two and then bounce it. So we always used to say, don't throw a pass with one hand. In a backdoor offense, the one hand bounce pass is the quickest way to deliver it. Four point game here. Shot short. And then Kanate gets fouled inside. Yeah, what a great story. This young man from Mali played his high school basketball at Kennedy Catholic up in Sharon, PA, up there by Youngstown. Bob Huggins, an icon in Northeast Ohio and Western PA. And this young man's going to be a tremendous mountaineer the next three seasons. The Bob Huggins, who had such a brilliant career at West Virginia, but he started his career at? As a player at Ohio University. Right. Yeah. Played for the Bobcats. Of course, his dad, Charlie, one of the great high school coaches in Ohio history. Brother Larry played at Ohio State with Clark Kellogg. And, well, no, no, he was after Clark. He played with a great backcourt of Stokes and Taylor. Holding inbounds. Holding can really shoot it. Carter fired. That one way off the mark. Knudsen being harassed. They get it up front. And now Parker to the corner. And an air ball from Lamb. Bolden backs it out. I want to leave Bolden open. He's a, he can really, really shoot the three. Another one of those sophomores. And a rebound pulled down there by Hunter, and he is fouled. It's our under-12 timeout, and things are tight here in the early going. Number 23, West Virginia, by a bucket. Boo back here at HP Fieldhouse. John Chambi and Fran Fraschilla. Happy Thanksgiving to you, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well out there, and you enjoyed 
your turkey. We talk so much about West Virginia and the talent that they have. Bob Hawkins doesn't really get highly recruited guys. He gets guys that want to be coached the way he coaches <laughs> and that fit the style, right? It, exactly. You have to sell out. You have to sell out with energy and effort, and that's exactly what they do. Watch early in the game. First play. Right, uh, Parker turns his... Uh, is back to the ball, a steal. There's the pressure on the five-second count on the inbounds. And this is great defense without fouling. Very good hand movement. Trying to make the passer uncomfortable. And then another opportunity for easy baskets. 16 points for the Mountaineers tonight, John. 11 off of turnovers. And that is their bread and butter. And Bob told us yesterday, he told his athletic director, he said, you need to fire me because I'm not doing a good job recruiting <laughs> or give me a raise because I'm winning with these guys. <laughs> and by the way, before I get tweeted at, Larry Huggins did play with Clark Kellogg at Ohio okay. State and on some great teams. He didn't play as much until later in his career. But uh, the Huggins family in Ohio is a uh, is a legacy. There's no question. Oh, Twitter's going to yeah. get you. Oh, they Twitter's going to get you. I'm a former Buckeye assistant. I should have known that. Where else have you been? Assistant at Ohio U, Ohio State, Providence College. Nebraska. Yeah, I was there eight days. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even meet Tom Osborne. I was there <laughs> so quickly. Here's the pressure down. There it is. And yeah, they get a foul. Uh, uh, Bolden didn't like the call, but they got the foul, actually on Wesley Harris. Well, I'd like to see this. It, it, they got it on Harris because Bolden was incredulous, and now Harris is wondering what he did. Let's take a look right here. James Breeding is right there. Oh, now, see, that's a that's a cylinder foul. That's They called him for the, for the shove, but that could have been called a cylinder foul because the defender got so close to the offensive player made contact that he would have, have been allowed to pivot, and that's a new rule this season. can't get up in pressure and straddle the offensive player's legs. You've got to give him room to be sure. able to pivot without contact. They get it in to McLennigan. And now Williams, oh, a little slippery as the freshman almost lost his footing. Hard to beat this West Virginia off it, team off of just back cuts versus pressure. There's another opportunity right there. Oh, nicely done, Parker from Las Gumaris. And I think they're gonna, they are gonna count it. I think at first Bob Huggins thought it might be uh, he was in the cylinder and it was vertical. But watch the strength of Brian Parker. The cut. Here comes Kanate. And he, you know what, he reached down, John. You got to stay vertical. Watch the hands come down. Oh, you know what? I take that back. I think on second look, I thought Kanade just went straight up. And when he did come down, he never made contact. That's a hard call to call because it looks like a foul. But the, uh, the, the defender inside the restricted arc is allowed to play vertically unless they assume that he moved. But it looked like he went straight up and down. How about the Red Foxes hanging in there? 11 to go first half and down a point. And a turnover on the Mountaineers. And how about that last basket by Brian Parker? Yeah, absorbing the contact and the, the skill to be able to hang in the air and still hit. And doing it over Kanate, who's got those long arms. You have to be really, really efficient to beat West Virginia continually on those backdoor cuts. And right now, Maris has got two of those in the first 10 minutes. Williams handling here against Carter. Javon Carter, one of the best defenders in the country. Parler rebounds the miss. West Virginia on the go. Here's Bolden. Right hand, that'll go. It had already gone through, and then it was knocked out of there by Gumerus. Freshman from Finland. He thought he was knocking it off the cylinder like you can do in uh, FIBA basketball. Good, good effort from behind. That looked like Bolden with the back tip. Both 
Holding a shade under 50% behind the arc coming in, so he's looking to load the gun. Inside, pull up, that won't go. Kanate the rebound Boy. and the putback. How just good too strong. He? Wow. He has made major improvements really from the start of last year to now. Well, I know one thing, John, he's living in that West Virginia weight room because he's horsing guys right now. You don't see that kind of physical play in Finland or Iceland, I can tell you. Has he got a little Al Horford in him? Young Al Horford? I mean, a bit, I think. Yeah. Doesn't have that three-point shot no, yet, but Al didn't have it either. That's what I was going to say. The, uh, Al's the, turned into a, a player that's much different than what we saw, certainly as uh, a college player. As he's gotten older, he don't want to get banging around in there, you know? Well, they, it feels like they all <laughs> end up go that way, know. you know, whether you're talking about Michael or Kobe or Wade or LeBron. Yep. They could all jump through the ceiling and like to go to the rim. And right there... Uh, a foul called on Logan Rout. And this young man, Logan Rout, earned a scholarship after walking on. Lifelong West Virginia fan. He goes about 6'11", 260. And the thing he didn't want to do there was commit the foul. And he got away with it because uh, that Fox is unable to capitalize. Bolden, that wouldn't go. Fight for the loose ball, route the rebound. Bolden, the jumper, wouldn't go again. And Dosich, the rebound. And here's Funk now from way downtown. And then out of bounds off of Hunter, and they can't believe it. Yeah, we haven't really talked about Ryan Funk yet, the junior from Clarence, New York. Guy that can really shoot it. You see how anxious he was to get that three up in transition. Yeah, he led them in three-pointers made last year. Played for a great prep school coach, Jerry Quinn at St. Thomas More Prep. Knudsen. And Carter the rebound. Boy, Javon's really pushing it. Harler can't hit. They've had some good looks. And Harler is a good shooter. Bob Huggins told us an interesting story about Harler getting going so fast on the defensive end that at times has to learn to slow down offensively. Oh, I, I think that's a, that's a really hard transition to make. Of course, he was four or five in their last game, but he's otherwise struggled this year behind the arc, and they know he can shoot it because he makes them in practice. Maris, by the way, has turned it over ten times. Hunter off the mark, and it ends up in the hands of Funk, who fires it up ahead. And Lamb able to track it down. Six-point game, Dosich. And it route the ball. And they get the foul on Knutson. David Knutson, the junior from Denmark. Picks up his second. Last two games, he's averaged 17 points a game. He's been a big factor for them. And Carter at the line. The senior now, he's been the defensive player of the year last year and on the all defensive team of the Big 12. The last three years. And Baxter Miles Jr. watching right now. They have the most experienced power five backcourt combo among starters in the country. Yes, Miles was a four year starter. He's going to come back in. We showed him, John, because he, they need his offensive punch and he's going to get back in there. But he and Carter certainly. Three NCAA tournaments, Sweet 16 a year ago. Andrea Bernardi, freshman from Italy, has checked in as he tracks that one down the corner. And now being harassed by Carter. High 
high arcing shot. And now Lamb. Didn't get it off. Yep. Shot clock violation. Now watch Javon Carter. He's been outstanding tonight defensively. He comes over and challenges. I mean, that's that's what we call multiple efforts, John. When you play half-court man-to-man defense, a great defender gives you multiple efforts on the same play, and there's an offensive foul by West for no reason at all. Yeah, they got Logan Route, actually. I'm sorry, yep. So he'll go over and grab a seat. I'm also interested, I know they're on the defensive end now, but how they handle West Virginia at the point with Carter sitting. Yeah, I mean, that, that's where Miles can handle the ball, certainly. And yep. Beto Bolden's more of a two-guard yep. who can score it. Bolden gives off to Miles. You know, we were talking about minutes yesterday, right, with Bob Huggins and yep. Carter playing 32, but he reminded us that Juwan Staten played 36 his final year. Yep. Out of bounds, and it'll be West Virginia basketball when we return. It's our under eight timeout, and the Mountaineers by eight. West Virginia 25, Maris 17, 7.44 to go here in quarterfinal number four. The winner will take on UCF at our second semifinal tomorrow. John Chambi, Fran Fraschilla, happy Thanksgiving. Back at HP Fieldhouse. The Advocare Invitational. And the PK80 presented by State Farm. Here's the motion bracket. Duke able to Beat up on Portland State, 99-81. And going on right now, it's Texas and Butler. And still to come, Florida, Stanford, and Gonzaga in action. North Carolina and Arkansas both getting wins. And UConn and Oregon going on right now. Still to come, Michigan State and DePaul. There'll be two champions. It's not like if North Carolina wins victory and Duke wins the motion bracket. They'll play each other. Obviously, they'll see each other at least twice during the season. But uh, with 16 teams, it's not a 16-team tournament. It's two 18 tournaments. There'll be two champions. I think they should let them play. West Virginia on a 7-0 run. A 1-3-1 zone out of the timeout by Mike Maker. His team's been... Fairly composed despite those 12 turnovers. They've done a good job of keeping this game in striking distance. Miles had to hoist as that shot clock was winding down. And now the freshman Williams looking for a man, and Bolden takes it away. Up ahead, Miles hangs, can't hit. Canate can't hit. And Maris comes away with it. Knudsen on the kick out. Got it. And a five point game now. That time the freshman Williams more under control. The last time he picked up his dribble, which you don't want to do versus this uh, stifling West Virginia pressure. West from way downtown. Parker up ahead. Williams. And the dunk wouldn't go. And then the back tap as Williams able to help get the takeaway. And now Parker got a player down. It's Bolden, John. And I didn't get a chance to see. how or why he went down. Bob Huggins going over to check on one of his guards. Remember, Beto Bolden missed the 
2015-16 season with a right ACL tear, but he's up and walking, and that's a good sign. Yeah, limping a bit right now. Covington, Kentucky. He missed his first year, as you said, because of that ACL. Every time you go into Morgantown, you see him, as many of these young guys and ladies do, rehab, especially a serious ACL injury. It takes about six to nine months to recover, and then you got to get your confidence back. And unless you're Adrian Peterson. Unless you're Adrian Peterson, that's correct, and some other freaks of nature. But he had some big moments last year. Beetle Bolden, 17 points in 10 minutes at Oklahoma. Harler, nice look. Tanate and West both had point blank looks and couldn't finish. Mountaineers by five. Parker inside and he's fouled. Yep, and Kanate once again, John, he broke that plane of verticality. And that's the third time Maris has gotten a backdoor cut. I, I think this is going to be an easy look. Watch the hard cut by Parker, and you can jump in the cylinder, but watch him come down. See, you, you can't come down with your hands. you got to stay vertical straight to the ceiling. Yep. And it's, believe me, it's a, it's a tough skill to master for a big guy. Well, who's the guy? Gosh, I'm terrible. I'm blanking. Georgetown to the NBA Pacers. Roy Hibbert. Yeah. Perfect example. He made a living of living inside the restricted arc. And did a good job though always staying vertical. Absolutely. No, no question. And, uh, and college teams practice that now. How am I not coming up with Roy Hibbert saying it's terrible? Yeah, I've had so many good big guys there, right? Tumbo, Morning, Ewing. Kick opposite Carter. Now Harler looking for some help. Miles will fire. Flat. Man. Carter a jumper. That'll go. Jamon Carter with the bucket. 27-21. It has not been a thing of beauty for West Virginia on the offensive end. They have not had a shortage of good looks, though. Parker kick out. I don't think their pressure is as sharp as it normally is. And I don't think they have the athletes out here that they've had in the last couple of years. McClenaghan, left hand, and Miles ends up with it. And a walk. And this is a West Virginia team out of sync right now. It, it's, it's tough, John, when you're not making shots. And, and I, I say this now because I've experienced this. When you're not making shots, you look poorly coached. Right. And, they're not poorly coached. It's just the ball's not going in the basket. And so what happens is the game looks, this is an ugly game right now. Well, but to some extent, wouldn't you describe the way they lost that Texas A&M game that way? I mean, the ball just kept going to right. the basket for A&M. Yeah, and they couldn't make a shot. Remember? It's as much the offense as anything else. Carter inside. That won't go, but he's fouled. Before that possession, West Virginia, their last 12 possessions, one for 11 with three turnovers. And how many easy baskets did no they doubt. miss, right? West and Kanate. Well, Javon Carter has been everywhere. I tell you, Freddie, in prepping for this, and we look, we've seen West Virginia so many times because we do so many Big 12 games, but. Carter is such a good rebounder. I mean, a, a guy for a, a small guy puts himself in, in good defensive rebounding position. I would say that the main ingredient is effort. You know, everything he does, he does with great effort. And uh, he's a bulldog. You put him in there against a typical 6'8 guy, I'm going to take my chances that he's going to come down with a rebound. Yep. He's relentless. That's the word I would describe him with and Funk is fouled they get that one on Javon Carter 
That is his first. And he knows. He's talking to himself. Not a smart play. Senior from Proviso East High School. He was he played for a guy I coached at Providence College who you know well, Dickie Simpkins. Sure. Dickie played in the NBA for the Chicago Bulls. Now a scout in the NBA and he played on Dickie's AAU team and Dickie's told me many times not highly recruited. Not a lot of people were interested in him in the Midwest in Chicago. This guy couldn't play at UIC or oh Loyola gosh. or you know even some of those Big Ten schools right now. Obviously he can. Hey, he's a legit player of the year candidate in the Big 12 this year. Mm -hmm. and the Big 12 again will be one of the best leagues in the country. Vermont West is taking tough shots. Can't shoot contested shots. Miles gets inside and rolls that one home. Now the danger for Marist, as we've seen many times, is West Virginia with this pressure. It wears you down, and they're easily capable of going on a run here. I'd clear it out and just let Parker go at it. Knudsen from deep. Out of bounds, West Virginia basketball. Under four timeout, West Virginia by nine here at the Advocare Invitational. of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. 30-21. I just got go Mike in my headset. <laughs> wow. Our producer, Steve Poseman. All right, the battle for Atlantis. The bad boy mowers battle for Atlantis. Villanova and Northern Iowa. The championship game is set for tomorrow, noon Eastern, ESPN 2. It's Northern Iowa able to get past NC State and Villanova with a win against a good Tennessee team. It never goes the way you draw it up, right? Everybody That's expected true. the two Wildcats, Arizona Villanova. And Ben Jacobs' team, which had a rough year a year ago, off to a terrific start. And they're going to face a really good Villanova team who's got five best players on their team. What I mean by that is every day you watch them, you go, he's the best player. You know, DiVincenzo. Yep. Bridges is the best player. Brunson's Brunson is the best yeah. player. Yep. Amari Spellman, the, the sophomore, is the best player. They've got a really good basketball team. A lot of veterans. Bolden, corner three. Yep. Got it. Right out of the timeout. That's good coaching. Run something for your best shooter. Looks like Beetle Bolden's back after that little scare when he fell. And right now, if you're the Red Foxes, you don't want any, any runs here because this can go from 12 to 20 quickly. Parker. And the rebound ends up with Machi Bender and now Carter. Bolden looking for space. It's going to be a jump shot, I think, because I don't think they'll throw it to the two big guys. Yeah. Bolden, that's from deep, and that won't go. Fight for the loose ball. Miles, offensive rebound, and yep. the putback. It's a good trio out there right now. You'll see that more this year. Hud's worried about Beetle Bolden last year defensively because he's not a it's not a big kid, not physical, and mm -hmm. he's gotten stronger. But this is offense is a threat. Yeah, they get Parker for the travel. Well, Mike Maker's team down by 14 in a 10 0 West Virginia rod. And I don't think Bob Huggins feels like his team has played particularly well no, in his first half. No, and, and you know, as I've watched them in action for the first time this year, my big thing with them is uh, they got to become shot makers. You know, Miles Carter got to make the, these, these jump shots. You can't go all Big 12 season making 33 percent of your threes. No, and and you know for this game, I think it spells trouble for Maris because 
you know, you talk about process versus results. You keep giving West Virginia those looks. They're eventually going to yes. make them. But I'm with you. You get into to Big 12 play. And, and, and yeah, and, and John, I, don't, I just don't, I mean, as much as their press has been pretty good tonight, I don't think it's as good as it's been the last couple of years because of the depth. Bender gives off Carter. He's got the freshman Williams on him. Shot clock winding down. Miles. That won't go. They're two for 18 from three. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, you make five for 18, and this is a 20-point game. 90 seconds to go here first half. Winner will play UCF in the semifinals tomorrow. Baseline jumper, and that's good. Isaiah Lamb, the junior from Baltimore. He's part of that junior class that was the first recruiting class for Mike Maker at Marist. And a really, really cool story. A kid who's overcome a ton. He was on the front of Sports Illustrated. Isaiah Lamb is one of America's homeless high school athletes mm -hmm. for a time. He and his parents were homeless while he was playing high school sports. And a neat talent to see a kid like that get the chance in college. That out of bounds, and it'll be West Virginia ball. There he is, Isaiah Lamb. Ball. Tore his ACL his senior year of, of high school. Always been partial to Baltimore kids, John. They mm -hmm. Tough, hard scrabble guys. Charm City, Time Isaiah out. Lamb. Time out on the court, and West Virginia leads. I'm a turkey. It's a good sign. We got college football coming your way tomorrow afternoon. As Pitt will take on number two Miami. And that again Friday noon Eastern. Jiffy Lou Rivalry Series. And that is at noon on ABC. So after you get your shopping done in the morning, you can check out some college football. Miami unbeaten, taking on Pitt. Don't forget to heat up that leftover turkey and stuffing. Makes a good sandwich. Put a little cranberry sauce on there. Watch a little football. Carter a three. That won't go. You can see Javon Carter right now frustrated talking to himself because those, as you mentioned, John, those are good looks. That last foul on Daxter Miles. West Virginia three for 20. McClanagan not able to hit, but it's a Two shot situation for the the senior from Texas who is described as the funniest guy on the team. Yep, he's from Dallas. Able to hit. Yep, Carrollton. About 25 minutes from my house. Shot clock turned off. West Virginia. Plugin for bumping Javon Carter. 38 23, our score. Well, they're up, but Bob Huggins is not happy with yep. this performance. I think one of the other points when we talk about offensively for the Mountaineers, and I know Isamai can be inconsistent, it is one of the things that he brings to the table is. The ability to to score. So when they get him back in January, that is going to help things offensively. For well, them. and we'll you know we'll see a what kind of condition he is and playing playing shape is different than staying in right. shape. Now he can practice with them, correct? Yes, can't travel, can practice. But the other area he helps is just another fresh twenty to twenty five minute body yeah. in the up tempo press Virginia mm -hmm. hit the offensive glass philosophy that's made these guys so good the biggest reason for the success of West Virginia over the last three and a half years is they get about 15 to 20 more possessions per game 
uh, on opponents because of their offensive rebounding and the pressure and the steals. And that's where he could come in handy. Clock winding down from the corner, and it'll go. Gumaris knocks it down. And Maris closes to within 13 as we go to the break. Well, this is say Gumaris. Yeah, the danger of pressing is if you break the press, you get shorthanded on the other end, and Gumaris flips one in. 39-26 at halftime. West Virginia with the lead. So Bob Huggins will take his group into the locker room and have a chat. See if they can make some more threes when they come out in the second half. Mountaineers with the lead at the half here at HP Fieldhouse in the birth. And the semifinals is on the line. West Virginia leading back. All right. Welcome back to Feast Week presented by Lowe's on ESPN. It's the Advocare Invitational. And from Disney's Wide World of Sports Complex and HP Fieldhouse, West Virginia at the break leading 39 to 26. Hi, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. John Shambi alongside Fran Fraschilla. West Virginia, an uneven first half performance, but still a lead. Start with this really struggling from the three point line. Over half their shots are threes and they're three for 20. That really pretty much sums up the dismal offensive performance by West Virginia. And yet they have a double figure lead. And one of the guys, though, that played exceptionally well in the first half, Sagaba Kanate, a guy who's got limited experience but continues to get better. Oh, no question. We're watching him get better each and every game, John. This young man, one of 14 siblings, four who are playing college basketball, only a sophomore. He's built like a Mack truck and plays like it. Tough inside, hard to guard once he gets that close to the basket and even improving on his perimeter game. But tonight, it's been in the paint. And then on the defensive end, the one bright spot has been the uh, harassment of Javon Carter. If not the best defensive player in the country, certainly among just a small handful. And you like the pressure without fouling right there. Extremely, extremely disruptive. And uh, if anything, it's been that West Virginia defense that's uh, built this 14, 13 point lead. All right, so look at the statistics of the thing that jumps out 33% for West Virginia and just three out of 20 from that three point line. Yeah, and, and you know, they've got uh, 10, they're 50% they're, they're or higher from two. Right. But uh, they don't really have, think about it. There's no Nathan Adrian. There's no Elijah Macon. There's no Issa Ahmad. It's a different team. A lot of, a lot of youth, particularly on the front line. And uh, other than Kanate they having trouble scoring inside. So Carter to handle Mountaineers basketball to begin the second half. One three one zone by Maris was somewhat effective in the first half. And again, they'd like to get it in the paint. Oh, shot blocked. Kanate can't hit. Foul inside. We always say this, John, against zones. You know, there's, there's a couple ways to beat the zone. The third way to beat it is outside shooting. The first way is you run it up the court and score in transition before it gets set up. But in order to beat a zone in the half court, you must play from the paint out because when you score inside, you demoralize the defense because why are they playing zone? Mm -hmm. They want you to stay on the perimeter. And uh, we saw that right there with Dax Miles getting inside and Kanate coming up with the rebound and Miles getting fouled. You get a chance at the garden to watch Washington play and Mike Hopkins, of course, taking that 2 3 zone out west. It's rare to see a West Coast team going predominantly zone like that, you know, but one of the games, Providence, I thought, did a pretty textbook job. Of they did. That they zone. did. You know what's going to make that zone better? Players. Knutson yeah. yeah. inside yeah. and finishes. Give Maris credit. They've done a really good job tonight of. Uh, 
either back cutting or beating West Virginia up the court. That's too easy. Well, again, shooting it at a higher rate than West Virginia for this game. That says something. And if they don't get the ball inside West Virginia, John, they're going to have to keep jacking those threes. You can see there's more of a concerted effort to play inside out, can you? Shot clock down to four. And inside West with the putback. And they've changed their press a little bit. They did this in the first half. There's nobody on the ball. So when you don't have someone on the ball, you have an extra defender in the court almost to be a center fielder. Knudsen. Funk reverses it. Nicely done by Ryan Funk. Usually known for his deep shooting, but a nice drive right there. You see how packed in those white shirts are. West Virginia has come out the second half trying to get it inside, but uh, not a lot of holes. Good look. Beat inside, West in close, and couldn't hit. And West Virginia's had a lot of that. Kick up ahead, Knudsen. And that'll go. And it's a 10-point game. That's five baskets now that Maris has not had to work for versus half-court defense. Talked about Ryan Funk. Didn't have a scholarship coming out of high school. He went to St. Thomas Moore Prep and earned one. Saw the drive right there. And then just a run out off the loose ball. West Virginia not back in transition. The extra miles falling asleep. Last foul on Dozich, his third. So West here, who last time out went for 22 against Long Beach State, one shy of his career high. He knocks that down. And now the lead is 12. Good job by West Virginia that time. They're double teaming the primary catcher of the inbounds pass. and let him catch it. Parker. And they're going to get the foul. The Maris bench wants to score the goal. One thing about Brian Parker, he, he he goes to the rim, he goes with force. Take a look right here. There's the drive, the little push. Look, that, that ball is on the way up. Parker, who played as the third fiddle on a team with Derek Pardon, who starts at Northwestern. Of course, Carlton Bragg, who was a member of Kansas for two years, no longer there now at Arizona State. Brian Parker, many thought, was the key to that team in a championship run by Bill Angelo St. Joe's. Knudsen picks up that loose ball. And that one tipped out of bounds. Kanate got a piece. Maris hanging in there is the hardest thing when you're coaching if you're Marist in this situation. Simulating the speed in practice without a question uh, you know and you, teams try everything when you play West Virginia when you prepare for them five se five on seven five on eight try to do it the best you can I think the thing question I have right now there's a turnover is why is West Virginia so flat you know, they, they got beat in the first game of the season they've pretty much defeated three opponents they should have beaten See, he pivots, he travels every I agree. time. He travels west every time he catches that ball at the elbow. Miles, a good look at it. And 
they get a foul on Harler. When you when you when you you do baseball from May to no from uh, April to November, what's it like when a really good hitter goes into a three-week batting slump? Yeah. I mean, how do you get out of it? I mean, how do you? Especially maybe you maybe guy hits a hard couple hard balls at, at fielders, right? Sure. How do you? How does that guy get out of it? Because that's what's going on right now with yeah. with Miles and uh, Carter, you know. I, you know, if this is going to be an unsatisfactory answer, and but my unscientific study would be you just get out of it. Mm -hmm. You just end up getting better results, and then whether it's some good luck and then your confidence improves and then you're back where you are I, you know mechanical stuff there are adjustments made but it's not easy look at that all the yeah. way from the corner and Knudsen has eight points and he's been in the middle of a lot I beg your pardon he's got ten and they keep they keep shifting defenses now that looks like they're in a flatter one three one pack more in towards the lane Canate the yes. jumper. Yep, and we talked about that. We haven't seen that much tonight, but that's an area that Bob Huggins told us he has improved. Lamb, nice move, and he's fouled, and Isaiah Lamb will go to the line. They got a chance to get it to single digits. Knudsen step back the triple and the red boxes hanging inside HP Fieldhouse as per usual the Mountaineers fans turn out they love to travel 46 35 West Virginia on top number 23 team in the country with the lead and here comes Isaiah Lamb to the line. Get that last foul on Kanate, his third. Not good. Yeah, no doubt. Three for 22. Kanate will sit. Allen comes in. Kid from Baltimore knocks it down. Nine point game, 15 30 to go. And yeah, the winner will play UCF in yeah, the semifinals tomorrow. Carter flips it up. And then West eventually comes away with it. Who do you get with that one? Harlan. Chase Harlan. And that's number three on Chase. Now how about Maris now? A chance. Give him credit. They've been they've been poised. Yes. That's the thing. They've been poised and they've made some threes. They've gotten some runouts versus shaky transition defense. Bob Huggins wanted to push off on the freshman Austin Williams. Dozic gives off. Lamb gets into the paint. That time you got Lamb for the push off. And they get Isaiah on that one. Yep. Well, left the left arm on the drive. He's going to get by Allen. Not much there. 46 37. <laughs> Bob Huggins has got a few more wins than Mike Maker, or at least he yells more. I'm not sure, but Allen way there. off the mark. Oh, my goodness. Carter couldn't hit. They have had so many close looks and just have not been able to convert. By the way, you were talking about. Marist alums and of course Rick Fox the guy or Rick Smiths the guy you you, you think of not Rick Fox Rick Smiths <laughs> not but Red, I mean not Red Fox either. not Red Fox either <laughs> right but I mean Rick Smiths had 
He was a good NBA player. Oh man, for the that Pacers, is, I would say. What a great career and what a great run with a great organization. Mm -hmm. All those tremendous teams. We saw Antonio Davis' son, A.J., in the first half. Yeah. They were teammates. Reggie Miller, certainly. So many good players on those Pacer teams he played with. And eventually, Detlef Schrempf was with, yes. the, with them as well. Chris, yeah. Chris Mullen was with them at the end of his career. That's right. Yeah. Oh, nice feed. Dozic has a really good eye as far as passing the basketball. A big guy at 6'9", he leads them in assists. Speaking of St. John's, one of their radio broadcasters, Brandon Tierney, he's a Marist alum, saw him after yeah. the St. John's win. Ian O'Connor, I believe, is a Marist alum. The outstanding sports writer. Got a little sloppy here. Ten on the shot clock, 14-22 to go. They go reset. And by the way, they've had a great women's program for many years. Last couple of years haven't gone as well, but they have dominated the MAC over the last decade and changed. Ryan Georges, the outstanding women's coach at Marist. And the foul there on uh, D'Angelo Hunter. <laughs> That'll be his first. Yeah, that's pretty much an automatic nowadays. When the defender gets tangled up with the offensive player, they're just going to call that a trip. And, uh, more often than not, it is, but sometimes, uh, sometimes it's incidental. But... Those are handling and then gives off. Freshman Williams. He's handled the ball nicely today. And Lamb with Bolden on him. Oh boy. Freedom of movement, that's what they want. Luckily, it's only the 16th foul, but bad news for West Virginia is Maris going to be shooting free throws the rest of this half. Yep. Red Foxes shoot at about 71% as a team. Schoberg is just checked back in. 11 point game, 14.06 to go. Parker looking for some help. And inside finds a cutting Schoberg. How about that? Great patience by Brian Parker. Nobody open was open early. Schoberg, a big guy, was out on the perimeter, and he just decided he needed to back cut. You see right there. The sophomore from Sweden, 18 starts a season ago as a freshman, completes the three-point play. And we got ourselves an eight-point game. Harris is 0-3. Most recently lost to Army on Saturday night. Allen, that's off the mark. Lamb ends up traveling. And yeah, Mike Maker a little frustrated there. Fourth season as head coach in Maris after Coming from Division Three, Power Williams. Feet inside, Miles. Layup wouldn't go, but the stuff there from Harris. And that's and a, a foul, foul on John. Miles. Yeah, yeah that's, just, that's just a good call. I, mean, I love the way West Virginia has played over the last few years, and every night it's not going to always be pretty but you got to know when to back off a little bit yeah I mean, this this style has been why they've been good but yes. you know with thir 13 and a half to go and now Maris is going to shoot free throws free throws without having the pressure to defense yes it's a good opportunity for them and I know West Virginia is a little frustrated in terms of 
feeling as though and their fans being vocal that the refs are being overly aggressive and calling fouls. <laughs> to me, I know this sounds funny, but if you made a few more shots, if you made uh, a couple of your layups and a couple of your threes. It's a 25 point game. Yeah, and then that's, you're not really talking about it. No it's, doubt about it. Listen, Bob Huggins has seen this before. He knows his team offensively is struggling. Holden can't hit. Miles and one. Pretty nice play by Daxter Miles Jr. Absolutely, and he is a very good rebounder for his size. Bolden with a good look, and see the senior Miles trying to get him going, and this partisan crowd of Mountaineers trying to get it going as well, and there's Daxter Miles with good concentration. They've got really good fans. Oh, yes, they do. I mean, you think about going into Morgantown now. It is one of the places in the Big 12. You're looking for atmosphere. There are a number of good stops. Obviously, you know, Allen Fieldhouse. But you go into Morgantown for a big game. That place rocks. Oh, there's no question. That's one of my favorite places in the country to go. I'm going to. I'm all, You just got me thinking of pizza. Pepperoni rolls. Okay. Did you have to do that? <laughs> you just got me thinking of. I'm not going to have a pepperoni roll for another month or so. <laughs> See, just pressure without fouling if you're West Virginia. And for Marist, be calm with the ball. Knudsen, step back. And the rebound for Schober. Parker picks up his dribble, now needs some help. Lamb inside and one. I like his game. He's a small power, he's a, he's a power wing is what he is. He's 6'4", but he does not mind contact. We've seen him early in the year shoot the jump shots, and what he is, he, he's an attacker. He dealt with some knee issues last year. But he's made 40 starts the last two years. So you're talking about a guy who's got experience. Knocks it down. And it's an eight-point game under 13 to go. Little 1-3-1 uh, little one again, a little more extended. Got four guards right now out there for West Virginia. They're giving, they're giving West Virginia a taste of all medicine, John. Yep. Holden, baseline jumper, wouldn't go. Well, they get this to six. Their confidence level is going to shoot up even more, but they've done a really good job tonight, 28 minutes. Oh, well. Harris steps in and then throws it down. Timeout Marist. Wesley Harris from Jackson, Mississippi. He won four straight high school titles at Callaway. Showing you what he can do tonight on national TV. Woo! Good basketball. to go here second half and West Virginia uh, top of Maris 55 45 and we were talking Rick Smith's earlier yeah a little blast from the past oh yeah Duncan Dutchman played in the mid 80s and it went on for a long career in the NBA he was, he was a good college player you know, back then, John, international guys, they didn't know the difference between Marist and Duke or North Carolina. Sure. They just loved coming to the United States, and he ended up in Poughkeepsie, New York, and had a terrific run. And now guys like David Knudsen, Tobias Schoberg. Well, Rick Smith is like Michael Jordan. I'm sure the international kids didn't really know much about him, you know. You tell a kid today how good Michael Jordan was in the, in the United States, and they go, really? He's, he's not as good as Paul George. <laughs> you know? I remember seeing Smith's play, I'm pretty sure. If you remember the old ECAC Holiday Festival? Yes. Yep. 
the Madison Square Garden as a college player. And they get an offensive foul. And Bolden. In a little bit of pain. We got our under 12 timeout. And the lead is 10 for the Mountaineers. And let's check out our PK80 brackets. It's the motion bracket. Duke and Texas have advanced, and they'll play in the semis coming up tomorrow. And Florida and Stanford, it's going on right now. Ohio State and Gonzaga. And meanwhile, the victory bracket, North Carolina has won. They'll face Arkansas. You got UConn leading Oregon at the break, and Michigan State and DePaul later on. Got to go to champions and watch Michigan State, Duke, and Kansas and Kentucky. Grayson Allen is extremely impressive. Guy. Really good. Yeah, I think he's going to have a big year. My national player of the year preseason is Bondi Colson. Mm. I just think he's going to have to do so much for Notre Dame for them to be as good as they will be. He had a big game last night in the Maui Championship. Yeah, he normally does. Yep. Carter wide open. Got it. That is their fourth three-point shot. And uh, 25 field goal attempts. It's their first three of the second half. Dozich picks up his dribble looking for some help. Lamb cuts and one. Marist has done a tremendous. I did not think Marist could run as many backdoor cuts and complete them and finish them. Yep. But this is about six or seven now. There's the back cut. Pressure it goes by Bolden and then Carter trying to help. He's late. He reaches in. And completes the three-point play and it's back to ten. Austin Williams back in. Knutson will grab a seat. And Carter leads him into the front court. So West Virginia by 10. Carter a triple. And coming in for the rebound is Allen. off the mark but the rebound for Miles elbow jumper for Dax and he hits see I think if you're Javon Carter as long as the ball moves side to side and you're getting open looks you gotta keep shooting if you're not gonna find the ball inside the painted area he's got to break out of the shooting zone you know what I mean yep. They, they need him to shoot 38, 39 percent this season for West Virginia to have the year they want to have. Sure. And, and there's nobody that's going to score in the paint now, so he should be looking. As long as the ball is moving, he can get wide open looks, shoot the ball. Gets a good look there. Yeah. And exactly. gets it to go. Shoot it. He'll break out of it. This is like a baseball player we talked about, right? And Ray Styles just wants the kid to come out and wipe down the court. All of a sudden, it's turned into a 15-point game, but Carter's starting to heat up. Yeah. Good look. He's going to make those at a pretty good rate during the season. And he's a senior. No one else is going to be out there jacking him. Yep. Miles will, Bolden will. Got to be smart if you're West Virginia now because Maris is in the double bonus. Funk. And they get an offensive foul. And Dozich didn't like the call. Give Bolden credit, man. He has taken some lumps. And, and you know a reason he did not play as much last year is, is, is your point Bob Huggins didn't think he was just physically strong enough to play in the pressure defense and thought he would wear down he used him in spots effectively but he's going to be playing more this year 
Carter, another. And that hits the shot clock. It'll be Maris basketball. Yeah, more often than not, at least when I saw them, if he'd used Bolden, it would be something with a shot in mind at the offensive end. Yes. And a lot of times, an out of timeout situation. But there's no Tariq Phillip. He's right. gone, right? Tough. They took Davon Myers yep, as well, and they, yeah. And they took their toughness with them, too, you know? And not that this team isn't tough, but with seven sophomores and a freshman. Yep. They're not going to know the toughness that those seniors left, you know, left behind. Mm -hmm. Coming up, by the way, at the conclusion of our game, get the Wooden Classic, Dante Mate, and the Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, we saw him last year. Take on the, Cal uh, State Fullerton. Yeah, we saw this guy in the Hall of Fame class, CBE Hall of Fame Classic last year, give Kansas 29. And uh, it's the first time I realized how good he was. And of course, he had a great junior year. Mm -hmm. Hurt at the end, back, and more than likely he'll be an NBA player. Mark Fox, I know, loves having him around one more year. And again, that's the wooden legacy. It's coming up. Parker spinning nice. and hitting. Heck of a move. For Brian Parker. Well, his high school coach, Babe Kwasniak, is watching, former West Point point guard. And he's got to be happy about that. Taught him well. Well, he kicks it back out now, Miles. Inside, Allen. Offensive rebound and a putback for Teddy Allen and Dozich. I think may have taken a, a head or an elbow to the mouth. Allen was caught underneath the basket and jumped out to get that shot up. Watch him pump fake. And boom, Ooh. right there. Yep. I mean, that is top of the head, right into the jaw. And that's one of those that can be you know, really dangerous on a lot of levels. And in that spot, you wonder a little bit about. You never know. Getting you know. your bell rung yeah. and, a, and a concussion. Yeah. Lose some teeth. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah, he took a pretty good one right there in the jaw. 15 point game under 10 to go. Maris, the Red Foxes. I don't know to just hang in. They get a foul on. Uh, he was not happy with Teddy Allen. And he said, why? It's just uh, learning, figuring out the system. Gets that to go. Tobias missing the second. Harris stayed in that zone. It's been effective. It's kept West Virginia from scoring in the paint very much. Allen launches, that's off the mark. Bolden picks it back up. Bolden for three. He just has not been able to find it. And then Lamb tracks it down. Oh. 
and it counts. Wow. Everything that has been up around that rim tonight for Maris has gone in. But they're not counting that one. They're saying it's on the ground, okay. so it'll be two free throws. But, yep. uh, but we'll watch it because Isaiah Lamb, we talked about him being a an aggressive attacker of the rim. Yeah, that foul was early. Williams out top. Good call. I feel like Austin Williams has shown a lot of poise mm -hmm. in terms of one of the guys out there that body language wise has stayed steady handling the ball in the face of that pressure at least to me hasn't given off a panic feel. Yeah but I think when you look at the kind of program he came out of at Seton Hall prep and they play great competition that's usually the case John. I always loved uh, I was lucky to coach in New York area you always wanted those New York Jersey Catholic High School League kids because they were hard coached. You know, they came in already with an understanding of work ethic and they played the best competition in the country. So the fear factor was eliminated fairly quickly. That's a good sign. Dozic back in. Huh? Williams knocks it down. Maris within a dozen. Possession arrow and it belongs to Maris. So Maris has it down a dozen, 8.17 to go. And a timeout on the court. 8.17 to go here at HP Fieldhouse. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Advocare. To learn more about the comprehensive offering of nutritional products, go to Advocare.com. Gildan, love your dad, but don't wear his underwear. Gildan, every thread counts. And ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex at Walt Disney World Resort. The ultimate sports experience for athletes, families, coaches, and fans. D3. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone out there and the Marist Red Foxes are hanging in there. Yeah, here's the Red Fox Thanksgiving. Yeah, believe it right there. Wearing a wearing a wearing a wearing a. Hi everybody, John Chomby, Fran Priscilla. Happy Thanksgiving to you. West Virginia leading Marist, but I, I think you'd have to say that one of the stories here is just the fact that Maris has been able to hang in there despite the West Virginia pressure and defensively has given West Virginia trouble at times. They have. West Virginia, when Kanate is not in, has nobody that can really produce points in the paint. And so Marist has dared West Virginia to shoot the ball from the perimeter and the three-point shooting, as you can see, five for 31. For the Mountaineers, West Virginia came into this game tonight shooting about 35%. How about Maris shooting 52% from the floor? Mm -hmm. Now West Virginia going a little zone here. Knutson from deep. Wow. Nine-point game. Knutson mentioned the last two games he's averaged 17. Yeah, this is a team that started the year losing in overtime to Lehigh. Close loss at UMass Lowell and then got blown out Saturday night by Army. Bolden turns it over. Just a silly mistake. Watch the back foot of Bolden. Steps on the line. Bob Huggins is telling him, hey, the court is 94 by 50, and it's 47 at the midcourt line, and you cannot step into the backcourt. <laughs> Little court geography right there, John. Nice. I like it. 
We all need it from time to time. Knuts in. No! Oh, oh my God, goodness. Another. Wow. This the is junior from Denmark. <laughs> and Maris is on a 9-0 run. Canate back in. Harris can't hit. Rebound ripped down by the freshman Austin Williams. This gets interesting now. Well, you better find Knudsen. That's the first thing I'd say. Inside, Schoberg. It ends up Knudsen. Another. Got it! Oh, my goodness. David Knudsen. He's got 19. Bob Huggins asks for time. And Knudsen with five three-pointers. It's a three-point game. John. It's a Red Fox Thanksgiving indeed. <laughs> well, one thing we've said all night is this Red Fox team has played with composure. And how about David Knudsen? Now, he was almost a 50% shooter coming in in a small sample size, 6 of 13 on the year. But what a performance. One of those six juniors that Mike Maker brought to campus when he got the job. And this has got to be a confidence builder. He's five for eight from three. But yeah, you talk about that group of juniors, Knudsen, Funk, Parker, Lamb, and Paulson. And an eclectic group. Parker from Cleveland. We talked about Lamb from Baltimore. Funk from Western New York. And then the two international guys. At 56% from the floor and here we go a three-point game and Maris is staying in that one three one zone it's been a more than an annoyance it's been a hindrance and now the key for West Virginia is can you get the ball inside the Kanade and that's a foul that Mike Maker won't be happy about although he's clapping and this is actually only going to be a one and one Knudsen picks up his third and here's Harris now. Wesley Harris, as we mentioned, a junior college transfer from Mississippi. And gets the front end. Played his high school basketball with Kansas's Malik Newman, but was uh, much less regarded, obviously, coming out. Malik, one of the top 20 players in the country, but good for this guy. Went to Juco for a year, redshirted a year, and now he's in the Big 12. Two big free throws. And here comes the pressure. Nobody on the ball. Dozic being harassed. And they beat the pressure with the dribble. Somebody lost the shoe. And it's Harris. Funk got it! It's a two-point game. Well, that's what Ryan Funk can do. He hadn't done it much tonight, but uh, plays with confidence. He figures as long as Knutson's making so much, the confidence right here doesn't even hesitate. Yeah, that's from deep. Woo. Wow, this is amazing. Great job early in the year. So many crazy things happen in college basketball. No question. Yep. We expect a Villanova, Arizona tomorrow. We get Villanova, Northern Iowa. The battle for Atlantis. Trying to overload that zone with a little high low. If they can't get it into Kanade, they're going to eventually have to shoot a three. Started to Miles. Shot clock winding down. Harder will try. Can't hit. Rebound Maris. Wow. Chance to tie or take the lead. Maris has hit their last seven shots. 
Parker, got it! And we are tied. 67 apiece. Right now, West Virginia has zero confidence in their offense. Carter trying to answer. It yes. does. If you're going to win or lose, you got to go with the guy that's been doing this for four years. And Javon Carter's got to realize that now. And Daxter Miles has got to get some, some shots up as well. He's had a tough night, Dax has. Parker spinning, Knutson, that's from forever. Woo! Kanate is fouled, and they get Schoberg on that foul. I would have went out there and slapped him five myself if he, <laughs> if he made that one. <laughs> yeah, this is a good rhythm three by Javon Carter. Watch the ball spin off his hands. Perfect rotation. And you've been doing this for so long, you're trying to get your teammates involved as a point guard. But if I'm going to go down, and uh, I'm going to go down with my best player shooting the ball. Nope, I get you. Rebound, Miles puts it up. Won't go. Fight for the loose ball. And it belongs to Maris. Wow. Harler went down hard. And we mentioned how good an offensive rebounder Dax Miles is. And he doesn't get that to go. And then watch the scramble and the hustle. Great effort both ways. Can't fault West Virginia's effort. An intensity, but uh, it's been matched tonight. Land can't hit, Kanate the board. See that 1 3 1 zone, it's hard to swing it side to side with crisp passes. You got to throw those heel, they're throwing a lot of helium passes, John. Balls that stay in the air a long time, it's got to be swung quickly. Harler, that's a three, and that's a biggie. They needed it. Yep, good rhythm, too. He shot that ball with confidence. Knutson going to work. Dozic out to Paulson. He hits! They are not going away. What a performance by this 0-3 Maris team. Mike Maker trying to build this program. And it's mostly been done by this junior class. And here in the second half, they have been sensational. They've shot close to 85% from the floor in the second half. Harler gets another. Exact same spot, Chase Harler buries it. Great ball move at that time. Carter was double teamed. He swung, swung it to Miles, and it stayed on Miles' hands about a split second. Parker turned his head, and then Carter found it. They almost turned it over. Harris needs to get this ball to the veterans. Smart move. You're going to get Harler again in the other corner if you get the ball moving quickly. There it goes. He's there if you swing it quick. Oh, good anticipation by Knudsen, and now it's Parker. Parker into the paint. Wow! And hits. Timeout Marist. What a game. All right, Brian Parker, he reminds me of another Villa Angeles St. Joe's guy, London Fletcher. Never played college football, played basketball at Villa Angeles St. Joe's. This guy might have a football future. Three to go here from HP Fieldhouse. And what a game. West Virginia leading by four. And a reminder, airing live on the app from the Wooden Legacy.
It's Georgia and Cal State Fullerton. That's right now quarterfinal action, and that'll be up next here on ESPN News. All right, so Ooh, look at those numbers. I mean, second half, you're talking about 15 of 18 from the floor for Maris, 6 of 8 from 3. If you don't have a calculator handy, I do. 83.3% in the second half. They have yeah, not exactly yeah. doing it against chopped liver, doing yes. it against a really good defensive team. They haven't been intimidated, John, that's for sure. Yep. And you would expect that with all these upperclassmen. These are big possessions. Got to find something yep. here. Carter now. Playing out top too much. West kick out Miles from way deep. In and out, loose ball. Knutson able to pull it down. Looks like Brian Parker on the bench is cramped up. He's trying to roll the cramps out. He could use his offense. Dozich looking for some help. Gets the ball to Schoberg and then back Dozich at three and then missed everything. They're going to stay in that zone. Parker's going to come back. West Virginia, 9.22 to go. Led 65 to 50. And it's been Marist on a 22-11 run since. Didn't see this coming. No way. Under 90 seconds to go, West Virginia ball up four. Boys out west did not see it coming either. Yeah. But I don't think I would have taken Maris in the, in the points. Feed inside. West and a layup. Gotta go quick. You had a three-point play in your pocket. That's not a bad time to do it. Parker. And they get a foul inside, and that's on Carter. West Virginia fans <laughs> wanted to travel. Bobby Huggins is doing a dance. He's doing, I think he's doing the electric slide over there. He's saying he slid his pivot foot. <laughs> uh, watch his free throw form. Yeah, I mentioned London Fletcher. He played 17 years in the NFL. He played basketball at St. Joe's in the Division III career. And that's what this guy reminds me of. It's a tank. No doubt. Four-point game under a minute to go. Carter handles. This is the last possession that you can go. Oh, Pick ball. That clock will be reset from 19 to 20. New rule this year. I got to tell you, and if you look at that replay, I might be wrong, but I think that's just a pass that hit him in the foot, <laughs> not a kick ball. I think I thought he stuck. I thought he stuck it out just a little. I think there's a lot of time being run off right now. It's a two possession game. Carter. Kanate, no over the back hold. They don't need to Kicks shoot it. it out. Kanate with a big rebound. Watch him carve out space on this shot, John. Straight up, stays vertical. And is that Parker that fouled him? I believe so. And that's Parker's fourth. Kanate with a big free throw to make it a five point game. So this is one of those situations right now. If you're Mike Maker, if you have a specialty play, a three point play, I'm always the advocate to drive it and score and get fouled and set up your press, get the quick two, but 
this much time, if I had a three-point play that I knew we could execute in our back pocket, this mm -hmm. is a good time for them. I get you. They need two of them, yep. and they need some missed free throws and a little luck. Benate doesn't help out there. Yep, two-possession two game, but they have to be threes. The West Virginia don't foul and bail them out, but attack because they're not going to foul you. And a rejection. Another opportunity for a three-point play if you have it. Again, Georgia, Cal State, Fullerton coming up next. West Virginia should switch all screens. Dozic flips it up and in. Got a foul immediately. Doesn't matter who you foul. They foul Miles. All right, time now for our Advocare player of the game, Javon Carter, 18 points, five boards, four assists, and four steals. I'm going to give the consolation prize to uh, David Knutson of Marist, young man who put on a shooting display in the second half. Javon Carter doing what Javon Carter does, leading this team. It's going to be a good lesson for them. I got a feeling we're going to see a, an inspired West Virginia team tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they have beaten up on three opponents at home. It's really hard to tell right now, John, how good they are. But yep. they can't be as good right now as they were last year, as you see Knutson there can't possibly as, be as good right now in November as they were at the end of last season when you look at the losses the Adrians and the Phillips and yeah the, no doubt the I, I mean look they were 28 and 9 last year mm -hmm. a sweet 16 team it's gonna run out of time if you don't go for three here right now the, yeah. oh, they had Funk in the corner score it just doesn't matter you know doesn't matter if you're not shooting the three ball because yeah. they'll need a miracle here. They'll need yeah. a they'll need a turnover and a three and a foul. Great performance by Maris, John. Yeah, no doubt. Amazing, inspired. A lot of poise. Yep. They were down. They were down double figures a lot. Tyler to inbound, Dozic on him. And they'll foul Carter. West Virginia set to improve to four and one. They will take on Central Florida. And that'll be tomorrow at five. And then, of course, our other semifinal will be Missouri and St. John's. So that's at 11 a.m. This is not the second best team in the Big Ten 12 right now. No. At this point. Now, it may be in a month or six weeks, but I would take right now Baylor, Texas Tech, and TCU, and, and maybe Texas. And we know it's going to be all scrambled this year. It's going to be an amazing No, I understand. I understand what you're saying. I, I you know, I, I think that getting a mod back in the room to just get better at this point, yeah. it's, it's hard to bet against. Bob Huggins team. Well, seven sophomores are going to grow up in the next two months. Yep. Parker from deep won't count, and that's the ball game. Bob Huggins and Mike Baker shake hands. 84 78 is the final, and we had ourselves a good one here. So, as we mentioned,
Semifinal tomorrow, 11 Eastern, Missouri and St. John's. And then at 5 Eastern on ESPN2, it'll be UCF and West Virginia. That should be fun. Our championship, by the way, coming up ESPN2 on Sunday at 9.30 Eastern time. 84-78, the final for Fran Fraschilla and our entire crew. I'm John Chomby. Let's send it out to the Wooden Legacy as Georgia takes on Cal State Fullerton.